Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Shawnee and we are Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. I'm super excited today, you guys. I am going to show you how to make my gnome bottle toppers. Now guys, these are so versatile. You can do so many things and top so many things with these. Today I'm going to be topping a sparkling juice bottle. And this is the second one I made. This is, I purchased the material at the Dollar Tree and the embellishments. I have a couple from the Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. As with this one, this is the very first one I've ever made. This is my favorite. I absolutely love this. This is a felt material on top and the ribbon is also from Hobby Lobby. The beard from Hobby Lobby. The beads came from BB Craft with a few embellishments from the Dollar Tree as well. Now I want to show you what these look like on these bottles, you guys. They are absolutely beautiful. Now this is my sparkling juice bottle right here. I'm going to show you how easy these are to attach to these bottles. You just open it up in the back, slip it on, and there you have it. I think these are so adorable. We're going to dust a little bit. Isn't that adorable? These will be something that I take to my craft show this year. Okay, and without further ado, let's get started. Now what you're going to need is you're going to need material that is either fleece or cotton. That's what I recommend. I tried a stretchier fabric yesterday, guys, and it just did not work. So today I'm going to be showing you how we're going to cut out our fabric. Now this is the fleece. You can take any size that you have on hand and you can cut it down to the size you need for the body of your gnome hat. And we're going to go six inches across from the fold. Okay right there and I'm just going to nick this guys I'm just going to nick it like so just like that okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go 12 inches up from the bottom left corner so about right there right at the bear's <laughs> the bear's mouth there and again I'm just going to turn my fabric and I'm just going to nick it right there. Okay, with my scissors. Now what we need to do here is where we made our mark down here. Okay, our little cut. I'm going to go at the corner of that cut and I'm going to follow it up to the top of the niche that we made at the top of our material. Okay, I'm just going to follow that right up just like so on an angle. just like so. Okay, now put the material to the side. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I'm going to run our press over our material once again. And guys, you can tweak this if you have to. Like, I'm not liking how our point is not sharp. Our point is flat on top. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to tweak that and make it how we like it. Okay. I'm going to turn this inside out like so. Okay. Take our press once again. Make a nice crease. Okay. Now we're going to pin this because we're going to sew these guys. Okay guys, let's run this over to my machine and get this sewn up. You want to follow your foot on your sewing machine. Put 
good in the papers. And at the top, right here, I always double tie this, guys, just for security. Before we turn it to the right side, we want to go ahead and we want to put a small cuff at the bottom, just a small one. About, mm, let's say half an inch, maybe a quarter inch, half an inch. You can make it as big or as small as you want, guys. Just like so. I'm going to go ahead and press this down with our mini press. Just makes it lay much nicer, guys. Okay, now I'm going to be using today a Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to use this very mildly because it's very thin and it will go through our material. And we don't want that. Even though it's going to be covered up, you don't want it. It takes forever to dry, friends. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to tack it with this. A little bit of Fabri-Tac. Hot glue and just tack it. Just like so. Just tack it. Pat it with your hands. You can also use finger protectors and or your spatula. I'm just taking a little skewer now. You want to be very careful not to rip your material. Okay, now I am going to use a bit of the Fabri-Tac again, guys. This just ensures that since I am taking it to my craft show, I don't want the beard to fall off when someone puts it on their gift. You know what I mean? So this is to ensure that that fabric is going to stick together. And Fabri-Tac will definitely do that. want to place it on your line just like so make sure that any glue that has seeped you want to make sure that is good and dry or that you remove it right away so that your hat doesn't stick together just like that And again, guys, this is why we want to make sure that the bottom of our beard, the backing, looks nice. Because when we take this off, it's going to show. Adorable so far. Okay, guys. We're going to turn this over. Now we're going to put on our trim. Get over on the seamed side that we sewed. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to use the black and white buffalo check. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby as well. Now guys, if you want to sew your trim on, you can absolutely do that. Just take it to your sewing machine or hand sew it. I'm going to just go ahead and use my Fabri-Tac and my hot glue. This is actually fabric fusion. Just a wee bit, guys. This stuff, mm, it goes a long way. Yes. We're going to place it right down to our seam. Just like so. And we're going to follow our entire hat around. Just placing it even with your cuff. Placing our Fabri-Tac
Fabri-Tac, hot glue, Fabri-Tac. Just like so. Again, I love this. It's actually Fabric Fusion. There I go again. I love it. It really, really adheres. And as time goes by, the bond just gets stronger. So that makes it really wonderful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this on. We'll be right back. Once we get to the end of our trim, in the back, we're going to tuck that seam and we're going to tack it with just a little bit of hot glue, just like that. There we go. And then boom. Press that down. Make sure that is dry again so it's not touching our beard inside and sticking to it. You can go back and you can fix any phrase you may have, any hot glue that's sticking out. You can make it look pretty. Now, looking at this, it's going to go on the back of our hat like so. And that's great. It's really good. I'm happy with that. So here, any little pieces you may see, you can just snip them right off, guys. It's not going to hurt it one bit. And there we go. Our seam is finished. Love it. Okay, now it's time for our nose. Of our bead. Just a wee bit. A little goes a long way with this stuff. And some hot glue around it, not mixing the two adhesives. Our nose, right in the center, just like that right in the center of that beard, just like so. Make sure that our nose is very secure on our gnome. We're gonna take a bit of hot glue we're going to run it right under the seam of the rim of our hat, just like so, around our nose. Hold it nice and tight, guys, until that is good and secure. Okay. We are so far absolutely adorable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our embellishments. And as you're going through, you want to make sure that you're putting your gnome onto your bottle so you know what's going on. And if you got to tweak anything, you can do it at that time. I'm not liking how this is not all the way down. Like it should be. There we go. That's good. Okay. Dab another dab of hot glue right there. Put that puppy down so it's going to stay where it should be. All right, guys. I'm just going to go like this again. Okay. Now we're going to set it down and we're going to get our greenery added. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to stay with our color scheme today. I have some greenery that I took from the sprig that I purchased at a liquidation sale. Actually, my daughter got it for me. We're going to go ahead. We're going to get some pine. I'm going to snip the pine real good so just the pine is showing. Okay. Like so. You always want your pine to be your base. We're going to go right here just like this. This is not only beautiful, guys. It's a great cover-up. Okay. But first, I think we want to flock this. We want to put some snow on this. So we're going to take some Waverly White Chalk Paint and flock our greenery, just like so. Won't take this long at all to dry. You want it mainly on your top. 
just make it look like some snow fell on there. And there we go. And we're going to set this aside to dry. Now that our flocking is dry on our little bush, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right above his little nose. We're going to do this one a wee bit different today. Now let's put some hot glue on. Tack it right here, just like so. I always put my hand inside behind the beard guys to for added extra security because we want to make sure that our embellishments aren't falling off. So just like this, just like so, just tapping it. Beautiful. Put your berries wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead, work with mine here. Remembering that I'm going to put my bow on. So I'm going to go ahead. Maybe we won't use the bigger berries. Maybe we'll just use the smaller ones. Yeah, that's beautiful. We're going to go ahead, guys, and we're just going to use the smaller berries. And I'm actually just going to use one sprig of them right here. And we're going to make a nice shoestring bow. Nice hot glue. We're going to go right here, just like that. Stick that on really nice. This is going to be adorable. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit different this time. I'm going to put my shoestring bow on the left side. I've been putting them on the right side. Let's be a little bit different here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add it to the right or the left side of our gnome today. Okay, I'm going to take my buffalo check ribbon and simply tie a shoestring bow, guys, just like this. I'm going to work with it until it's the shape I'm satisfied with. Don't want it too big because our gnomes are smaller. I've made our shoestring bow. We're going to go ahead and we're going to dovetail this just like this. Adorable. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to place it on our gnome just like that. This is so, so cute. Just like that. You just want the bottom of your greenery covered, guys, right over his nose. That's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and get some hot glue. Not even worry about the fabric fusion right now, guys. We're going to go ahead. We're going to stick this right there. Oh, my gosh. How adorable. This is so cute. Just like so. How cute is that, guys? Okay, now we're going to go ahead. We're going to try it on our bottle. We're almost finished. There we go. Try it on our bottle here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. And there we go. Go ahead. Our little hat's going to flop over like this. We're not finished yet. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add our little pom-pom now guys these little pom-poms i purchased these at mm, i want to say joann's quite a while back they're smaller you can use a bigger one if you prefer i'm going to go ahead and use this one right here because i think it's absolutely adorable and you go you want to take i am going to use a dot of fabric fusion in the center of this okay just in the center and you know, guys, sometimes I think hot glue is a tricky thing because you can use too much of it and it just oozes all over. So what you want to do when you're applying your little pom-pom here is you want to be very light with it and you want to get as close to that fabric fusion as you can so we're not seeping all over the end of our hat. Okay, so we want to go just like that. That's absolutely fine. Just like so. 
you can bring it up and kind of curve it around the end of your little hat there. Any big glue blobs you see, you can take care of those later. I'm just kind of working it around the end. I don't know about you guys, but it bothers me if I go to buy a product and it looks like it's just been stuck on with no care. Just, okay, there you go. I don't know. I tend to gravitate away from that. There we go. Absolutely adorable. What do you think, guys? I think he turned out absolutely gorgeous. And there it is, our gnome bottle topper. Again, you can use these for juice, wine. You can use these for candy jars. They're awesome. You can cut the pattern down smaller. You can make it bigger to fit a wide mouth bottle. These are just awesome. And if you like what you've seen today, go ahead and give me a great big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell next to your subscription and you'll be notified each time I upload new video. I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook at Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a blessed day. Bye!